Indian civilization an outsider's perspective. That I can only do since I'm not an Indologist or whatever. The concept paper of this symposium starts with Indian society is marked with its rich heritage that is a hallmark of our civilization. Here two different terms are used, society and civilization. And both are related to the adjective Indian. And then of course here, our civilization. So it's often the Indian perspective. The term civilization is widely used by historians, anthropologists and other workers in the social science. But, this, but it has no single fixed meaning. I will not enter more into the discussion of the term, but will work with the given notion that Indian society is marked with its rich heritage that is a hallmark of its civilization. But it has to be understood in the sense that Indian society is composed of many linguistic and ethnic societies with many cultural and religious traditions, which marks its unique civilization. Indian civilization is, in other words, an integration of many cultural elements, which means ethnic societies or communities. Indian society and civilization, with its rich ancient heritage, is also a result of its recent history colonial and post-colonial independent Indian history. It is a rich history of social and cultural developments and changes, as life means of this also change, renewal, being born again. That is also true collectively for a group, for a culture. It is also a constant search for its unique identity and unity. And that is also typical for Indian society and civilization. But this identity and unity is much debated and has to be debated. To integrate the vast number of different ethnic communities with their particular linguistic, cultural and religious traditions into a wider concept of Indian society and civilization which embraces and welcomes and promotes all of them as important members of the Indian society and civilization. These various cultural religious communities of India make India a unique, very unique in our worldwide society of today. And therefore also India has a special role to play for humankind, for the worldwide human society. In my opinion, we can use the term Indian civilization in the singular if we understand the age-old Indian way of living together of different ethnic and religiously defined communities. Under a common umbrella of an Indian political unit we call state or nation. India has an age-old tradition of being secular as well, not only religious. We should not forget the other part. So that's what we call often tolerance, in Italian convivenza, that we live together, accept each other, tolerate or even esteem each other would be the better way of doing so. Of respecting differences. You can be different, you have the right to be different. That must be the value in such a society, an open, welcoming society of various cultural and religious communities. Like any human society, India did not always find an ideal solution or harmony to solve the contradictions, rivalries and conflicts among the different communities which belonged to India. The caste system is one way to bring harmony to the various classes and groups inside the Hindu society. Of course, the coin has always two sides. But what is about the communities outside the Hindu tradition? How do they relate to Indian society? And how do they contribute to the strengths of an Indian civilization? 
that should be a question we should reflect about. This richness of India has always impressed outsiders, as it has impressed also myself. Coming from the Western world, from Europe, from Germany, my mother tongue is German, I grew up in a post war Western German Catholic family with 11 brothers and sisters. Religiously, I was socialized in a Catholic German community as a member of an international mission society. I have made pastoral experiences in other parts of the world and teaching experience in the highlands of Papua New Guinea, for instance, and then I taught in Papua New Guinea, Germany, Philippines, and since 2002 in Rome, in Italy, in Italian language even. This brought me into contact with various ethnic societies and cultures. In the last 30 years, I have lived most of my life outside my country and culture of origin. I understand my particular life journey is a kind of wonder in various human societies and cultures of pilgrimage. Intercultural communication has become my daily bread in this journey. Every day, in my lectures, in my own SVD community, I'm aware of the need for mutual understanding among people of different cultural and linguistic origins. And to be honest, I'm only a poor learner and beginner on the search for better communication and mutual appreciation of people of other cultural backgrounds. In this conference, I would like to speak about two men coming from my home country, Germany, who came over a century ago to India. And they found a special way to be inserted in Indian societies. One man, Christopher Becker, came when he was just around 30, and he had joined a newly found religious congregation, which had not a good tradition, and they got the mission in Assam. The other man came from a border site in my home diocese of Tria, John Baptist Hoffmann, and he joined the Jesuits, he was trained in Belgium. With 19 years, he was sent to India for his formation. During his long formation, 15 years, he had also to teach for five years in Saviour's College in Calcutta, as it was a tradition in the Jesuit congregation before he was made priest. He had to do that already. So I would like to concentrate on these two persons, especially on Hoffman. But for that purpose, I want to give you when both were expelled from British India because of First World Wars as enemy aliens, they were interned and expelled, they had to go back to their own countries, they found time to reflect about their experience they made in India. And Becker wrote a book, Im Strom Tal des Brahma Pudra. You can follow now. <laughs> in the valley, river valley of the Brahmaputra. So that is the title of his book he published in 23 about his experience in Assam. And the other man he published also when he came in, and he has also a very nice title of his publication, um, that he was 35 years, 37 years in India. Becker had only 10 years of his life, but really Hoffman stayed 37 years of his life. The best years and the longest period of his life, he was missionary in Sotanagpur in India. One quotation from the book of Becker, how he sees Indian culture, both work in tribal societies. So it's a commonality. So I would like to quote what Becker writes. The customs and habits of the hill tribes differ from those of the people in India in many other ways. Whether this is a sign of backwardness is debatable. I want, however, to point out that perhaps we are here dealing with primitive tribes 
with whose ancestors in former times might have reached a high degree of culture. Some questions and habits of the hill tribes are certainly praiseworthy and acceptable to the missionary. In this respect, they are even superior to the people of India. Besides the great simplicity and the naturalness found among the tribal shows that they are free from the powerful, all embracing and insurmountable barrier of the caste system, which all its negative influences, which is built into the very fabric of Indian social life. This is a great stumbling block on the road to progress for the Indian people. This is also the greatest obstacle towards conversion to Christianity. Among the hill tribes, there are no castes. They eat and drink together without any caste distinction. There is a certain democratic spirit pervading the whole organization of tribal life and action. In addition to this, there is another positive element in tribal society, namely the position of women. The position of women in tribal society means much for mission work, especially when we consider her influence in the family and in the education of children, this is not so in other parts of India. So it's remarkable what impression, what opinion or experience based opinion this German missionary had on the tribal people of Assam, comparing with the rest of India. You might not agree all to his opinion, but he sees also certain very positive elements in private society. That it's not hierarchical organized, that people are relating, have a common way of decision making, of discernment. That's what he calls. There's a certain democratic spirit pervading the whole organization of tribal life and action. I find it a very interesting observation which he makes. So I don't want to tell more from him because the second person we see now might be a bit more interesting. Father John Baptist Hoffman's way to understand the Munda people. So he originated also from the Rhineland, Western Germany. His village is just on the border to the small state of Luxembourg, last less than half a million. Just in September I had the chance to be there and to meet the new Archbishop of Luxembourg. He is a Jesuit as well, who worked 23 Greek years in Japan. Very seldom that a missionary is made Bishop in Europe from outside from Asia. So he completed his studies as a seminarian here in Darjeeling, the Himalayas, and then he was ordained in Kolkata, only some days of his life. Then he had received his mission appointment to work among the tribes in Chotanagpur. Before he arrived in Chotanagpur, he was already his mind set on tribal mission. He started learning the grammar, the language. When he arrived in Chotanagpur, he could already communicate to the people. And now he could perfect his knowledge, his command of language. And language is always a door to a different culture, a different way of communicating, of appreciation, of understanding. So he could learn more to penetrate into that tribal society. And we see what came out of this, his deep way of being inserted in the tribal society of Sotanak. 